Okay, so this is uh, P3, part two. And this is gonna be uh, an extension of what we talked about last time with uh, functions and graphing. Um, this time we'll do the full version of how to graph modifications to functions. We'll talk about all the different modifications and how they um, convert into modifications of graphs. Um, I'm, good, I'm doing this slightly differently or very differently from the book because I don't like the way the book does it. Um, I think the way the book does it is not explained very well. It requires memorization, kind of brute force memorization, where you don't really even understand why you're memorizing what you were memorizing. And so ultimately that means that it's really easy to memorize things incorrectly. And so it's really easy to make mistakes. All right, also, uh, what I'm gonna be doing here uh, works in more general situations than what the, uh, what the book covers. Um, and it's maybe, we won't see it as much in uh, this class, but many of you will be taking pre-calculus uh, next, and you'll be doing exactly the same thing in pre-calculus, uh, except almost certainly done it kind of in my way, as opposed to what this book does. So it'll help ultimately help you um, for your pre-calculus class. All right, so last time we talked about having a function and um, uh, knowing its graph. So let's say we start out with a function f of x equals x squared. We know the graph of that. That's one of the basic functions that uh, we're supposed to have uh, memorized or at least can reason out the graphs of. And the question was, uh, if I modify this graph in, in certain ways, how does the graph, or sorry, if I modify the function in certain ways, how does the graph get modified? So the one we talked about last time was if I create a new function, g of x, which is a modification of my f of x in this way, uh, and the formula would be like this, then how does the graph of g um, compare to the graph of f? right? Or another way to say it, how do I get the graph of G? How do I um, figure out the graph of G knowing the graph of F? All right. And last time what we said was um, this corresponds to shifting the graph to the left by three steps. So uh, if this is the graph up here of F of X, then the graph of G of X would be right there graph of g of x. All right, um, and we said that if, uh, if this had been f of x minus three, you would be shifting it to the right instead. Um, but the idea here is that it's relatively straightforward how to modify uh, the graph of f to get the graph of g. All right, um, we also explained how, uh, why, uh, things have to be shifted. Uh, let me do this in a different color just to emphasize. So here's the original graph of f, and um, here's the new graph of g. And what we did was we shifted everything to the left by three steps. Oops. Uh, what's going on? Okay. Um, so, so last time we also explained how, why this, this works uh, with, a, with a bit of reasoning. Um, so, and we also talked about uh, how uh, this kind of modification, we often associate to words like, to, to this phrase, uh, replace x with x plus three, right? So what we mean by this is if we start with f of x and we do it literally the instructions that are in this phrase, then we end up with a new function, f of, every time we see an x, we replace it with x plus three, right? So if f of x were x squared, f of x plus three would be x, that x would be replaced now with x plus three, and then whole thing squared, okay? Um, and that, that uh, this phrase here describes essentially uh, how we got from f of x to g of x, all right? Okay, and the way, the kind of better way of graphing is to kind of associate the, this word to the fact that you have to shift to the left, 
all right? And what you're gonna want to notice is if I give you a, a function, for example, let's say I ask you to um, graph square root of x plus three, right? Graph this. Uh, let me give this a name. Graph g of x equals square root of x plus three, right? What you want to do is you wanna notice that um, you know f of x equals square root of x has the graph that looks like that, right? So you know the graph of f of x equals square root x. And from here, you know that, um, so let me put this kind of in a way as a step. And then um, you realize, or you know, that g of x is equal to f of x plus three, right? So in other words, um, g is f, except What did we do? We replaced x with x plus three, right? Um, now, the deal is if you modify a function by replacing x with x plus three, that means its graph gets shifted to the left, right? So this graph up here gets shifted to the left by three steps. And that would be the graph of this new function, which is the g that we want. All right. So that's how we use this um, idea in practice. Okay, now the deal is, the, the kind of complication here is that there's many other modifications we can be doing, uh, and we're gonna be going through uh, all of them. And uh, each of those modifications is gonna be doing something different to the graph uh, of your unmodified function. And, um, one important thing to note is that the order of the modifications matter. So if you get your modifications in kind of the wrong order, you're gonna end up with the wrong picture. So um, we'll talk about that after we've talked about all the modifications. Okay, so let's, let's go through a, the um, other modifications that we'll be seeing. And again, uh, this is, uh, I'm giving this in terms of examples with you know f of x equals x squared, square root x. But in our actual class with trig, um, actually, this week, um, you'll be doing exactly the same thing, except with um, f of x equals sine of x or cosine of x. And next week, um, tangent of x, for example. All right, so this, this technique is not only going to be useful for you in pre-calc, but it's going to be useful for you this week in uh, Math 120. All right, so another modification. Another modification. Uh, Modification. So another one we can do is if we have a function, and again, let me just do all of these with the example of f of x equals x squared. Um, we can, let me let me do introduce this one in words um, initially. So we can replace x with 3x, all right? So what we mean is um, every time you see an x, you place it with 3x, all right? So that creates a new function. Let me call that g of x, all right? And the description of g of x is you, you have f of x, and then everywhere um, you had an x, you replace it with x plus three. Okay, well, um, kind of if f of x is x squared, then f of x plus three, sorry, uh, times three, uh, sorry, three x. We're replacing it with three x, sorry. Um, every time we see an x, we replace it with three x, right? Um, then up here, f is the function that whatever you put in, you square it, right? So now I'm putting in 3x and I square it, okay? So ultimately, if we wanted to simplify as much as possible, f of, x, f of uh, g of x would be 9x squared, all right? Okay, um, but we'll, we'll leave it like this because um, the actual kind of simplified formula doesn't, isn't as relevant for us right now. Okay, so the question is, um, if we know the graph of f, which we do in this case, right? f of x equals x squared, the graph is a parabola. Uh, what is the graph of g? Oops, right? Um, in other words, when we do this modification to our original function, multiplying, uh, replacing all x's with three x, how does that affect um, that the graph, right? What's shifting or, or 
what manipulations do we have to do to the graph um, of f to get to the graph of g? All right, so the way we're going to answer this is um, in the same way we kind of analyze the, um, we place x with x plus 3. Uh, and the way we're going to do it is basically kind of reasoning through, through uh, an example. So let's say if we know, so let's say we know f of 6 were uh, 10. Okay, I'm just arbitrary numbers, basically. Um, so what I want to determine is, what does that tell me about g? Right? This is exactly how we figured out um, what the replace x with x plus 3 did. All right? Okay, now let's, let's think about this. So g of x is literally, just by definition, um, f of x, except you replace x with 3x. Okay. All right. Um, so we want to know something about g of x, right? We want to know something about the function g uh, through using this equality here, right? Well, we know f of 6 were 10, right? And so if this thing in here were 6, right, if this were 6, then this is 10. Okay, right? Um, because we know f of the input 6 gives the output 10, right? So in other words, uh, we want to solve 3x equals 6, right? So we solve this and we get x equals Two. All right. So what that tells me is that um, g of two is equal to f of three times two, which is f of six, which is well, that was the one thing we knew about f. F of six were ten, right? So equals to ten. Okay. So what we conclude um, in this in this kind of example is if f of six were ten then g of 2 would be equal to 10, all right? And how did we get from the 6 to the 2? Um, we divided by 3, right? To get from this, uh, x e to get to the x equals 2, we divided both sides of this equation by 3, all right? So notice this 2 here uh, is uh, equal to 6 over 3. That's how we got the 2. All right, let me do this with another set of numbers, and then we'll draw a picture. So let's say we also know um, if we know um, f of 24 oops, is equal to, and it doesn't matter what, what number, uh, let's say 1, all right, then what do we know about g? What, um, what does that tell, I'm gonna, I want to phrase it in the same way, what does that tell me about g? All right, same question. So we answer it in the same way, right? We know g of x is equal to f of 3x, right? We know um, if this number in here were 24, then we would then this right hand side would be 1. All right? So we want this this guy in here to be 24. So we solve 3x equals 24, and we get x is equal to 8, right? 24 over 3. Okay? All right, what does that mean? That tells me that g of 8 is equal to f of 3 times 8, which is f of 24, right? So the algebra um, here allowed me to kind of uh, set it up perfectly so that I get f of 24 right there, all right? Why f of 24? Because we were just told f of 24 is 1, okay? So this is 1, all right? So what happened was... Um, if we divided 24, sorry, if I wanted to, uh, let, me, um, let me write it in the same way that I did upstairs. So we conclude if f of 24 is equal to 1, then g of 8 is equal to 1 as well. All right? And how do we get from the 24 to the 8? We divide it by 3, right? 8 is equal to 24 over 3. Okay? So in terms of a picture, 
um, we started out with up here, all the way up here, with f of 6 were ten, was 10. And our conclusion was that then g of 2 is 10, right? So let's put 6 here. Let's put 2 here. Um, let's put 10 here. So this is f of um, uh, 6. That's 10. To get the uh, kind of information about g, we go to here, and g of 2 is 10. All right? So let me write it like this. This tells me g of 2 is equal to 10. And this is telling me f of 2 is equal to 10. All right? And the way we, uh, we uh, got from 6 to 2 was we divided by 3. All right? In the same way, um, if I put 24 here for my second kind of uh, example, and I put um, 8 here, right, uh, and 1 down here, then what I had was f of 24 was 1, but that told me g of 8 was 1, all right? So this is g of 8 is equal to 1, and this one here was represents f of 24 is equal to 1, okay? So what we see here is that um, it's not to, to um, kind of get from the graph of f to the graph of g, the modification is not a simple shifting, right? Because um, for this first example, we shifted uh, by a factor of three, but we shifted four spaces. Over here, we shifted a huge amount, right? So it's not just a simple shift, right? And in fact, we kind of know uh, what the kind of modification was. We, we took the input here, 24, we divided by three to get the eight. We took the input here, 6, and we divided by 3 to get to 2, all right? So everything kind of gets closer to the x-axis by a factor of 3, right? Um, if you're a distance of, of 6 from the x-axis, now you're a distance of 2 from the x-axis, right, to get the same value. Before you were a distance of 24 to the x-axis, now you're a distance of 8 to the x-axis to get the output of g, all right? So what we conclude is um, we're compressing, so to get from graph of f to graph of g, oops, we compress we compress towards the y-axis all right that's very important um, by a factor of three and again the factor of three means um, we get the same value when we divide by three all right to get from the value of to, to get from the output of f to the output of g all right. So in our example of um, the parabola, if f of x were equal to x squared, then what happens with g is that everything gets compressed towards the y-axis by a factor of 3. So it's going to look like that. All right. If you're already kind of close to the um, y-axis, then your, your compression is not too much, but if you're very far away, your compression is going to be more, right? Just like up here, when you were 6 away, you ended up at 2, but when you were 24 away, you ended up at 8, all right? So it's not an, e again, it's not an even kind of um, uh, modification like with uh, the translation. Okay, so one thing um, to emphasize here is compress towards the y-axis. So on the, on the left-hand side here, you're compressing towards the y-axis, so it actually looks like this. So you're compressing, uh, let me do the compression arrows in a different color, oops. So on the right, you're compressing that way, towards the y-axis. Uh, on the right, on the left, you're compressing this way, towards the y-axis, all right? So always towards the y-axis. And of course, if you're already on the y-axis, you just stay in the same position. Okay, um, so if you wanted to describe this in just a, a word, right, you're kind of getting, getting thinner, right? 
Okay, um, let me let me emphasize here. So, compressing by a factor of three means, for example, if I take a point here, and this was the output in terms of f, that guy right there is the same output in terms of g for the for the function g, and the relationship between this point and that point is that the one on the left is one third of the one on the right. All right, so this is one third of this. All right. Okay, so one thing to note here is that um, when we replace x with uh, 3x, we're doing a kind of horizontal change of our function, right? We're compressing horizontally. You can see these arrows here that I've drawn are horizontal arrows. And when we replaced x with x plus 3 last time, that was also a horizontal change. We shifted our graph to the left by, by three spaces. All right. So both of these modifications we've done cause horizontal changes to the graph of f. OK, next, we have a couple kind of notes here that we should make. Um, what if um, g of x, instead of being uh, f of x plus f of uh, 3x, f of 3x, what if we did this, 1 third x, right? What if it's it's um, a number that's less than 1, right? Uh, if the number is anything other than, if a number were 5, right, we place x with 5x, then it's pretty clear that what you would do is you compress by a factor of 5, right? If g of x were f of 10x, you compress by a factor of 10, okay? But what about 1 third x? This seems kind of weird, right? Uh, because that's a number that's less than 1. Well, what happens is, uh, what you would do is you would compress by a factor of 1 third, but that actually is equivalent to saying stretch by a factor of 3. Okay? All right, and you can figure this out in the same exact way. Um, let's say we know f of 6 were equal to, what did I have up there? f of 6 was 10. So let's say we knew f of 6 were 10, right? Then um, what would I know about g? g, well, um, g, well, I, I, I would solve, right? 1 third x is equal to 6. And that would be x is equal to 18. What, what does this algebra, what's the purpose of this algebra? It tells me g of 18 is equal to f of 1 third times 18, right? We're using, because we're using this guy over here. That's equal to f of 6, which is 10, right? So what happened was before f of 6 right here was 10, right? Here's 10. And now the, the value of g is... 10 at 18, right? So we sh we actually moved this way away from the uh, y-axis, right? So we're stretching our function away from the y-axis, all right? So that's why I stretch by a factor of 3. And of course, I should more most technically write uh, relative to the or away from the y-axis, all right? I guess I should write that. Okay. All right, so in effect, what that would mean is um, if I have g of x is equal to f of 1 third x again, um, and let's say f of x were x squared, just the parabola, then the original parabola would look like this. Ugh. Right? Then um, my new, my g would look like that. It would be fatter because I'm stretching by a factor of 3 away from the y-axis, all right? So things things would be getting kind of fatter. Um, my, my graph would be getting fatter in a way, all right? And again, this is all with respect to the uh, uh, y-axis, right? Um, this happens relative to the y-axis. Ah, let me fix that. Okay. Um, so this is... 
the analog of last time we said if you replace x with x plus 3, you shift to the left. But if you replace x with x minus 3, you shift to the right, right? So this is the analog. If you replace x with 3x, you're, you're compressing. If you replace x with 1 third x, then you're stretching. All right. Okay, uh, one more of this kind. Uh, what if the, the kind of factor, the thing that we're replacing x with, uh, we replace x with negative of something, right? So what if g of x, and let me do the kind of simple case, g of x is negative, f of negative x, right? How does this um, affect the graph of f to, uh, when we do this kind of modification? So this one is actually easy to see. Uh, if we know, again, let me use the same example. We know f of 6 is 10, if we knew this, right? Then what, what would that tell me about g? Well, then g of minus 6 would be f of negative minus 6, right? Which is f of 6, which is 10, right? And so if we knew that f of 6 were 10, then now we know f of g, uh, sorry, uh, g of minus 6, that's a 6 right there, is also, also 10, all right? So what happened here in words is this got flipped to the opposite side of the y-axis, all right? Okay, so we would call this uh, a reflection, all right? So reflect, um, so um, reflect, across y-axis, all right? So anything that was on the, on the right of the um, uh, y-axis flips to the left to get the graph of g. Anything on the left would flip to the right, okay? So f of x equals x squared is not the best example because it's actually symmetric, so you can't really see the difference. So let's look at the example of f of x equals x cubed. Right, and g of x would be f of negative x, which is negative x cubed. Right? What's the what's the graph? So f of x, we talked about this last time. The graph of f looks like that. What would the graph of g be? You flip it across the y-axis, and so this point here goes to there. This point here goes to there. This point here goes to there. Right? Directly onto the other side of the y-axis. So it would look like that. And then, again, things on the uh, left side flips to the right side. Goes to there, this one goes to there, right? This one goes to there. And so I end up with this thing here. Okay. So it's a, you reflect your original graph across the y-axis. So this is the uh, graph of f, and this one would be the graph of g. Okay, so this um, allows us to, actually all, all of these modifications kind of in consideration together allows me to uh, do a lot of kind of modifications of functions and um, still be able to graph them, right? So a simple kind of combo would be, what if I had uh, g of x is equal to f of minus 3x? Right? So one way you can think of this is this is two modifications one after the other, right? So this is, um, we're starting with f of x, right? Let's call this step zero, right? You start with f of x and then you modify this guy to get it closer to, to being g, right? So you replace x with 3x, right? So then this ends you up with f of 3x, right? Okay, uh, let me give a concrete example. Um, let's say this is uh, f of x equals um, square root of x, right? Another one we talked about last time. So this would be square root of 3x, all right? Okay, um, but that's not what we want, right? We want f of minus 3x. So 2 would be replace x with negative x, right? And what that does is um, we end up with f of minus 3x, which is the guy we want, that's g of x. And that would be equal to square root of minus 3x. Okay. Now, in order to, to do the graph, to what is the graph of g? 
Well, we just start with the graph of um, the in the first step or in the zeroth step. We start with that graph. Uh, we read these words here, and we know we need to modify by compression. And then we read these words, and we know we need to modify yet again by reflection. Okay. So um, let me draw the corresponding graphs of each step. Step zero, I have the graph of the square root. All right. Step one, now I have the graph of square root except compressed. So let me exaggerate it um, like that. All right. Okay. So this is the graph of f of x. This would be the graph of f of 3x. And then finally, we take, we always work with the previous step. We, we look at the graph in the previous step and we do the operation. Replace x with negative x. That means flip it. So I end up with something like that. Oops, that looks terrible. Something like that. So this is f of minus 3x. All right. So ultimately, this allows me to graph this complicated function here just by knowing the graph of this relatively simple function here. All right. And the way we did it was we went through the intermediate of graphing this function right there. OK. All right, this one is not the most exciting example, so let's do one that's a lot more interesting. Um, let's graph uh, g of x equals 3x plus 5 whole thing squared. All right. Okay, so the key here is to recognize uh, what this guy here, 3x plus 5 whole thing squared, what this guy is a modification of. Right, so we want to recognize um, our base function in a way, our base function from which we'll kind of get the graph of g is f of x equals x squared because that's a graph of something that we know. Right, we always want to start with the graph that we know. So, step zero is start with f of x equals x squared, and let me draw its graph right there. Okay, step one, we want to modify this guy up here so that it looks more like g of x, all right? More like the formula for g of x, all right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say replace x with x plus 5, all right? And that's going to be my step one function, all right? Um, in fact, let me... Um, let me name these functions like this. Let me call this f0 for step 0, all right? And then here, I'm going to have f1, OK? f1 is going to be the function from the previous step, except replace x with x plus 5, all right? So it's going to be f0 of x plus 5, all right? And what that's going to be is x plus 5 whole thing squared, OK? Um, you could just do it by looking at the formula up here, x squared. Everywhere I see an x, I replace it with x plus 5. Okay. All right. Um, now, when I use these words, replace x with x plus 5, that means I take my graph from step 0. In order to get the graph for, for, for step 1, I take my graph from step 0, and then I shift it over to the left by 5 steps. All right. So my new picture is going to be, here's minus 5, like that. That's terrible. Oops. Like that and like that. All right, so I've shifted over to the left um, by five steps. All right. Uh, in fact, let me draw the previous one just so that we can kind of visually see that better. All right, so this was, uh, the red is the original uh, one. So let me call it F0, right? That's F0. And this one here is my new one, F1. OK, and what we did was we shifted everything to the left five steps. All right. OK, um, we don't want to stop here because the function we actually wanted to graph was 3x plus 5 whole thing squared. But this graph here in step one is the graph of x plus 5 whole thing squared. So there's no 3. All right, so it's not quite what we want. So what we're going to do is we're going to do another step, and we're going to do a modification always to the previous step. So we're going to modify f1 to make it look more like the function that we want. All right. So the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to replace 
x with 3x, all right? And uh, this new function, following these instructions, the new function, I'm going to call it f2 of x for step 2, all right? This is going to be the previous steps function, f1, and then following the instructions, so f1 of 3x, because I'm replacing x with 3x, all right, to get from uh, function in step 1 to function in step 2. Okay, and uh, if we look at this, right, if we actually just look at the formula in the previous step, the formula was x plus 5 whole thing squared. We're replacing every instance of x with 3x, so this should be 3x plus 5 whole thing squared. Okay. All right, what is the graph of this? Um, well, we take the graph from the previous step, which was, let me do this in red again. So the previous step will always be in red. Okay, so this was f1 of x, the graph of f1 of x. And what we do is, well, we need to, when we use the word replace x with 3x, we need to compress towards the um, uh, y-axis by a factor of 3. All right? So, for example, wherever this point is, it now compresses towards the uh, y-axis by a factor of 3. So it's 3 times closer now. All right? In fact, we know where this point was, actually. Uh, I've labeled it up here. It was at negative 5. Right? Oops. It was at minus 5. And so now it's three times closer. So now it's at minus five thirds. Okay. So that kind of tip of the of the um, uh, parabola is now at mi at minus five thirds. Okay. And what happens is um, we're compressing towards the uh, uh, y-axis, so things are getting skinnier like that. Okay. Let me kind of oops, sorry. Let me indicate that we're doing this. And um, this is kind of uh, messy here. Uh, let me let me fix this up a little bit. So this should be. Let me move. Sorry. Let me move this uh, over here. Oops. Because I was running out of space there. Um, this guy should be like like this. All right. So this guy is being compressed towards the y-axis. All right. If I actually extended this line all the way up, it would cross the y-axis. And so my um, new graph would actually cross in the same position. And then it would be kind of thinner on this side. All right. Okay, because it's always compressing towards the y-axis. All right. Um, so notice... One thing here is um, the way I did this. Oh, uh, by the way, let me uh, say I'm done, right? Because this is the function that I wanted to graph. So this is actually g of x, all right? So what you typically do in these problems is you just do these modifications one after the other, and you graph the modifications one after the other until finally at your last step, you hit the function that you actually wanted. And so that means the last, the graph in the last step is the graph that you're looking for. So this final graph down here is the graph that I want. All right. Okay. Um, notice here I did this uh, in an order. The ordering I did was replace x with x plus 5 first. And then in step 2, I replace x with 3x. Right. Uh, that order matters. Um, because if I had done a different order, let's see what happens. Right. So if I had started out with, of course, f of x equals x squared, same function. And then in step one, I replace x with um, 3x. So let's say we did it again in the, in the other order. So this would mean that my f1 function would now be f0 of 3x, which would be 3x whole thing squared. Okay. All right. My step two function, uh, let's say I did um, this in step two now, replace x with x plus 5. Right, so again, uh, we're just swapping the order that we're doing the um, these words, okay? So I'm doing this one second now instead of first. So what this would do is it would take my previous steps function and replace x with x plus five. And if I look up here, that would mean three x plus five like that, okay? 
But this is actually not the guy that I want, right? I ultimately wanted to graph um, g of x equals 3x plus 5 whole thing squared, right? So let me emphasize that here. We wanted g of x equals 3x plus 5 whole thing squared, but that is not equal to this guy here, right? This guy up here is actually 3x plus 15 whole thing squared, all right? So what that means is if we had done these three steps and graphed these, these three steps, we would end up with a function or end up with a graph that's actually the graph of not the guy we want, but a different function, all right? So order actually matters quite a bit here, all right? Okay, I think it's a very good exercise um, to actually go through this, go through the graphs, right? Start from here, follow this step for, uh, do the same thing with step one, right? Replace x with 3x. Uh, let me just do it. Um, it becomes thinner like that, right? And then replace x with x plus 5 means I shifted over five steps. So I get this thin thing that's been shifted over five steps, all right? So notice the difference. The vertex here is at minus 5 now in this second um procedure, whereas the correct vertex was actually at minus 5 thirds. So you actually end up with a function that's wrong or with a graph that's wrong. All right. So make sure uh, when you use these words, replace x with x plus 5, you, you write down um, the function that you end up with uh, according to what those words described. All right. Make sure you write it down so that um, you can confirm at the end your you're uh, graphing the function that you actually want to graph as opposed to ending up graphing a function which is not the one that you wanted, all right? Okay, uh, when is a situation uh, where you would graph in this second order? Well, that would be if I had asked you to graph, uh, let's say, um, well, exactly, 3x plus 5, whole thing squared, right? Let me call it h of x. If I want to graph this guy here, then these words uh, in the second try down he up here would be actually correct, right? Because um, step zero, I would start with f of x equals x squared. Step one would be replace x with 3x, right? And so I end up with uh, f1 of x equals f0 of 3x, which is 3x whole thing squared. Right, and then two replace x with x plus five would be f two of x is equal to f one of x plus five, which is equal to three, and then x plus five whole thing squared. Right, so we would actually end up with the correct graph if uh, this had been our problem, but unfortunately it wasn't. All right. Okay. Um, Those are the two difficult modifications that people often uh, kind of have trouble with uh, because they're in a way counterintuitive, right? When we replace x with x plus 5, uh, we shifted things to the left, right? Um, for example. So there's two more modifications that we can do that are in a way more intuitive. So here's another modification. So this one is going to be if I start out with f of x and my new function is a modification of that by adding or subtracting a number. For example, f of x plus 3. All right. Notice this is very, very, very different from f of x plus 3 because in this one, you're calculating x plus 3 and then plugging it into f. Whereas this new one that we're talking about right now is you're calculating f of x first and then adding three to the result, all right? So these two things are very, very, very not the same, okay? All right, um, the words I'm gonna use to describe this is add three to output of f, all right? So no longer is this one uh, kind of the description, the wordy description. It's not replace x with, it's rather add three to the output of f. Okay, and th these words very much describe what's going on, right? Because I'm, I take the output of f, f of x right there, and I'm adding three to it. All right. Okay. Um, 
how does the graph of f change when you do this kind of modification? Well, this one is kind of simple, right? If I know f of 6 or 10, right, then what is f of 6 plus 3, which would be g of 6, right? That would be 10 plus 3, which is 13, all right? So what happens is if the graph of f right here, um, the input is 6, the output is 10, right? Then for g, for my new function, for my modified function, g of, g of the same value, 6, is now 13. So the, the output went up by three steps. Okay. So this one here is f of 6 equals 10. And now I've shifted up three steps. g of 6 is equal to 13. Okay. And you can see that uh, it's going to be consistent this way. If I knew that f of 24 were 1, then g of 24 would be 1 plus 3, would be 4. All right? So everything shifts up by three steps. So um, in the example of f of x equals x squared, right, my original function f looks like this, then g of x equals x squared and then plus 3 like that, would be the same graph except shifted up three steps. So it would be like that. And then what I've done is I've shifted up by three steps, consistently three steps. All right, all these arrows are the same kind of same, all these blue arrows are the same length, three steps up. Okay. All right, um, so shift graph of F up three steps to get graph of f of x plus 3, in other words, g of x, okay? All right, so when you use the words add 3 to the output of f, you do a vertical modification, right? So this is very different from the two that we just talked about. We're actually um, kind of modifying the graph by changing it vertically. We're pushing it up three steps as opposed to compressing horizontally, as opposed to shifting or translating horizontally, okay? All right, now what happens if you do, um, the natural question is, what happens if you do f of x minus three, right? Uh, in other words, add negative three to the output, or another way to say it, subtract three from the output. Well, this is gonna work in, a, in the same way, right? Um, except, you're going up negative three steps, which means going down three steps. All right, so your new graph is gonna be the same as your old graph, except shifted down by three, a consistent three steps everywhere. Okay. Uh, let me label these kind of a little better here. So this would be f of x, and um, this one would be f of x minus three. All right, down three steps. Okay, so this one kind of um, is analogous to the replace x with x plus 3, right? In that, that one was a horizontal shifting, and this one is a vertical shifting, all right? Okay, so that's another core uh, modification. Our last core modification is to multiply to the output. So up here, we use the words add three to the output of f of x. So our last modification is g of x equals three f of x. And what we did here was we multiply three to output of f. Okay, and notice again, this is in contrast to replacing x with three x, right? These two are definitely not the same. Okay. All right. Um, what does this one do? Well, if f of 6 were equal to 10, right, g of 6 would be, well, g of x is 3 times f of x, so it's 3 times f of 6. So these guys are a little easier to analyze. This is 3 times 10, which is 30. Okay. So what happened was, um, the height at 6 was 10. 
now it's three times taller, right? So if here's six, um, here's 10, originally f of, um, f of six was 10, right? For our new function, we've gone up by a factor of three, right? So this height here would now be 30. And this point represents the fact that g of 6 is equal to 30, all right? And this arrow is, uh, let me kind of put it in quotes, three times, right? Three times as, as tall, okay? All right, so what's happening is um, when you use these words, multiply a number to the output of f, you're stretching vertically, all right? Three times, you're stretching by a factor of three. And so what happens is if you were very high before, you're three times higher from 10 to 30, right? But if you weren't very high before, you only go up a little bit because three times of a small number is still kind of small in a way, all right? So this is not a, a kind of uniform trans, uh, uh, shifting like this, uh, like this previous example. This is a stretching. All right, so this is directly analogous to the words um, replace x with 3x, except the vertical version of that. Okay, so if I had um, f of x equals x squared, then my new function is going to look like this. Okay, so this is going to be g of x equals... Um, x squared, uh, sorry, three times x squared. All right, where the three is not being squared. Okay, and what's happening is this point is going up by a factor of three. So if this point was at height one, now it's at height three. Okay, um, or yeah, uh, and let's say this point right here, if this point were at height um, 10, it would go all the way up to height 100, all right? So everything by a factor of three. So in essence, what's happening here also is that it's getting thinner, but it's getting thinner in a way for a different reason. It's getting thinner because you're stretching it vertically. All right. Okay, uh, by the way, um, what happened, this is all you're stretching with respect to the x-axis. All right, so we're stretching uh, vertically about the x-axis. So that's really important because before we were stretching um, up horizontally about the y-axis, right? And the x-axis is important because what happens is um, if, let's say we had x cubed, if you were to stretch by uh, f of x equals 3x, f of x equals x plus 3, uh, f of x equals f of x, sorry, g of x equals f of x plus 3, then this stuff here would go up like that, but this stuff here would go down, all right? So these would stretch upwards, these would stretch downwards, because you're stretching about the x-axis, all right? Uh, maybe another way to say it is you're stretching away from the x-axis, all right? And of course, things that are on the x-axis would just stay there. Okay, um, now what would happen if, so let's go through the uh, other situations analogous to what we had in the, um, replace situation. So what happens if I did g of x equals one third f of x, right? So this would be it's the same idea. You stretch about the x-axis, but you're stretching by a, a number less than one. So this would be the same as compressing uh, vertically. So if you had started out with this, then you would end up with something that's uh, compressed towards the x-axis by a factor of three. Um, let me do this like that. Okay, so if this point were a thousand, now that point right there would be a factor of three um, from a thousand, so a thousand over three, all right? Okay, so this is again very analogous to the um, replace x with 3x uh, 
compared to replace x with one, one third x, right? In that situation, one of them was compression, the other was stretching. This one, one of them is stretching, the other one is compression, okay? Finally, what happens if we replace, I'm oh, sorry, if we uh, multiply output by minus one, right? So our new function would be minus f of x. So what this does, this one is easy, super easy to analyze, just like the analogous one in our previous case. If f of um, uh, six were 10, right? Then g of six would be minus f of six, which would be minus 10, right? So what was um, up here is now down here, okay? So this was 10. Now it's at minus 10. And this is uh, this was f of 6 equals 10. And this now represents g of 6 equals minus 10. And what happened was we reflected across the x-axis this time. All right? So reflect across x-axis. All right? Previously, it was reflection across the y-axis. And so, for example, um, if we have f of x equals x, uh, x cubed, let's say, or let's, let's do square root x, right? That looks like that. If I multiply minus 1, then I would end up with g of x equals minus f of x, which is minus square root x, all right? That means I have to reflect this graph across the x-axis. I would It would look like this, all right? So every point up here goes to its corresponding point down there. Every point up there goes to its corresponding point on the opposite side of the x-axis, okay? And the same thing, if you were below the x-axis, you go up, up above the x-axis. Okay, let's, um, let's do this. Let's do a, a concrete example. Um, graph g of x equals, um, let's say minus four three uh, x plus five um, plus ten. Okay. All right. So we we've oh, sorry squared. So what we want to do is we want to start out uh, with step zero, recognizing what the base function. Uh, is for this problem. So what's the function that we know the graph of? We have to know the graph of it. Um, that can be modified using our kind of steps that we've just seen or those modifications that we've seen that can be modified so that we can get to G. And in this case, because we see this square here, we know that we should start with f of x equals x squared. All right. And again, it's got to be a function that you already know the graph of. Otherwise, there's no point in doing this because you know, we're supposed to be figuring out the graph from step zero until the last step. Okay, step one, we want to do some modification to our previous function, to step in the pre uh, function in the previous step, so that step one's kind of, the, the function that we work with in step one looks closer to, or looks more like g of x, all right? Every step we do, we want to make it look more like g of x, all right? Okay. So the good news is the vertical modifications and the horizontal modifications, though the ordering for those, um, whether you do the horizontal first or the vertical first, it, that doesn't matter, all right? But within the horizontal and within the vertical uh, modifications, that ordering does matter, okay? So in other words, here I'm gonna choose to do the, um, the 3x plus five uh, modifications first. So I could easily have chosen to do the vertical modifications first, that would be fine. All right. Okay, I'm going to do the 3x plus 5 modifications first. So my next step is going to be, uh, uh, let me write the words first. Replace x with x plus 5. All right. So I take the previous step. My new function is going to be my previous function, except with these words um, used. Right. So this is x plus 5 whole thing squared. Okay, when I use these words, I replace x with x plus five, I know that I should shift my um, 
previous steps graph over by, by uh, five steps to the left. And let me actually label the vertex in each step just so we can kind of get a feel for where it's ending up. So here's minus five, okay? All right, next. So uh, one thing notice, right? Uh, we're getting closer to looking like G, right? F1 is X plus five squared. Um, and here we see uh, something plus five squared. Okay, next, replace X with three X, all right? So in effect, my new function in step two is gonna be this, the function from the previous step, except I'm replacing X with three X. So everywhere I see an x in the previous step, it should be a 3x now. So 3x plus 5 squared. Okay. And um, when we do use these words, the effect on the graph is that uh, we're compressing um, by a factor of 3. All right. So I'm going to exaggerate that by making it look really thin. All right. We're not looking for super accurate graphs here. Um, it's kind of, um, we want to kind of understand, in essence, the shape of the of the new uh, graph. That's what we're really looking for, all right? So um, exaggerating, kind of exaggerating what's going on is, is okay, all right? And maybe um, in this case, I'm going to, let me uh, actually do some annotations so that I can remember what I did. Um, so here in the, in the zeroth step, that's just my graph of the parabola. In the first step, I shifted it over to the left, right? So let me kind of indicate that by arrows like this, okay? Everything goes to the left by, by minus five, by five steps. Here, I'm gonna indicate this one by um, everything is being compressed towards the x-axis. So I'm gonna indicate it with two sets of arrows because things on the right get compressed to the, uh, on the right of the x, of the y-axis get compressed this way. And things um, on the left of the y-axis get compressed towards the y-axis, all right? So this way I can kind of look at the picture and, and understand what's going, what I did from one step to the next. All right, so here um, I can see I've made progress. I now have the three x plus five whole thing squared, okay? But I'm still not identically the same as g of x, so I need to continue. Step three is um, multiply output by minus four. Okay, so in effect, that means my function in step three is gonna be the function in step two, uh, step, yeah, step two, except multiplied by minus four, all right? So minus four times whatever that guy was up there, three x plus five, whole thing squared, all right? Okay, um, what does that do to the, to the picture? Uh, the minus four, the four causes it to stretch, um, uh, by a factor of four uh, vertically, and the minus sign causes it to flip across the, the x-axis, all right? So it's, now it's even gonna be thinner, and again, let me kind of exaggerate it quite a bit. And um, it's flipped upside down, all right? So I've done a, let me indicate it like this, I've done a flipping, right? And I've also um, uh, done uh, a stretching. Um, hmm. Maybe we do this in two steps because this, this picture is, is really hard to read what's going on, right? And I think it's always a good idea to do your work so that um, you, can, you can come back and, and understand what you did, right? If you're for example, while studying for exams. So let me just do multiply output by four first, and then we'll do the minus sign as a separate step, um, just to make it so that things are more, more clear. So now this thing becomes thinner, and what happened was we stretch vertically by a factor of four, right? So things up here get stretched upwards, things below the x-axis get stretched downwards, okay? And then um, we'll, we'll stick in the minus sign here. So multiply, output by minus one, right? And again, you could combine these two steps, but um, I really wanna make it extremely clear how I got from one step to the next in terms of the pictures. All 
right? Um, and so this is a flip from the previous step. It's always relative to what happens in the previous step. And now this picture looks a lot more um, uh, readable, right? So I'm flipping stuff from up here to down there and stuff from down here to up there, okay? All right, um, we're very, very close now. Uh, we have minus four, three X plus five, whole thing squared. Up here, we have minus four, three X plus five, whole thing squared. We're just missing the plus 10. And so in our, in our last step here, right, we know that if we add this plus 10, we're gonna get what we want, right? Add 10 to output, right? So F5 is minus four. So we take whatever we got, we, whatever function we had in the previous step, and we add 10, all right, to the result. And this is finally, you know, like I just said, this is exactly my g of x, so I know this is the last step that I have to do, all right? So this is why I'm actually writing out the functions from step to step. So this is why I'm writing out this, what this f1 is, what this f2 is, f3, f4, and finally f5, because I need to see that this guy here is identical to the guy that I started out with, because that's how I know when I, I need to stop, all right? So you do need to keep track of each of these functions from step to step, all right? Okay, if you don't, it's really easy to make a silly mistake. All right, uh, what does add 10 to output do? It shifts you up 10 steps. So um, I guess I said I was tracking the, the vertexes, right? So in this um, uh, step two, my vertex, um, everything was compressed towards the x-axis by a factor of three. So it was at minus five. Now it's at minus five thirds, all right? Um, in step three, I multiplied the output by four. Um, well, at minus five thirds, the output was zero. So now it's still zero. So this point still is minus five thirds, okay? In step four, I multiplied the output by minus one but my output was zero at minus five thirds, so it's still minus five thirds there, okay? And now I'm adding 10 to the output, so what was at minus five thirds is now shifted up 10 steps. So my vertex is now all the way up there at height 10, okay? And let me indicate this by everything has been shifted up by 10 steps, okay? And so finally, uh, this guy right here is the graph of the function that I want. All right, um, it seems kind of, maybe it seems a little tedious, but if you do this very carefully and you keep track of your functions, you keep track of your graphs uh, very carefully from step to step, um, theoretically, you shouldn't ever make any mistakes because you should be able to catch any mistakes uh, through, through the formulas for the functions. All right. For example, um, if I had gone um, in step three, and instead of doing multiply output by four, I had said um, add the output by 10, and then I did the multiply output by four, if I did that in a different order, I would end up with the wrong function down here. All right. So that's another reason why you should really write down the functions from step to step because that will catch mistakes where you're doing things in the wrong order, okay? All right, so a good example for checking that would be uh, to graph, so you can do this, graph um, square root five minus three X. Uh, let me give this a name. All right. So this one involves only the replacement um, operations, replace X with blah, blah, blah. Uh, but it's a really good example because um, you need to do it in the correct order, otherwise things will not turn out correctly. All right, so try this one out um, and then check the graph yourself on uh, graphing calculator on, uh, on the web and uh, hopefully you'll get the right, um, the right procedure. And, and one thing is when you're starting this out, when you're first doing this, uh, this, this kind of procedure, it's very likely that you'll get the order wrong. Um, once you realize that, just go back a few steps and then um, you know do it in a different order, right? 
um, and, and you'll be able to get it. So it just takes a little bit of experience uh, to kind of get the right, uh, to get a feel for what ordering you should be doing things in. Okay, again, like I said, um, in the uh, Math 120 uh, sections for this week, you'll be using exactly this idea and you'll be able to graph things like sine, oops, uh, like sine of 3x plus 5 times 4 minus 7. Okay, the only difference is now your core function is sine instead of, for example, the parabola that we used up here in this example or the function that you use in this example. All right.